hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel from this video i'm going to discuss about the 10th cranial nerve vagus nerve so uh, you know it is the 10th cranial nerve and it is the longest and most widely distributed cranial nerve in our body it is the only cranial nerve that has thoracic and abdominal distribution and the vagus nerve carries the cranial part of accessory nerve inside it for the distribution as well. Actually, this uh, vagus nerve is a, a mixed nerve which consists a motor part and sensory part. This contains uh, two sensory ganglia, uh, superior or jugular and inferior or nodosum on its trunk. So, first we will look at what are the nuclei of origin of this vagus nerve. First nuclei is, there are four types of nuclei which give rise to uh, origin of this vagus nerve. And uh, the first nuclei is the nucleus of ambiguous. Actually, it lies um, deep to the medulla oblongata and it supplies the striated muscles developed from fourth and sixth pharyngeal arches and also supplies the striated muscle of upper third of the esophagus. This is the dorsal uh, vagal nucleus and uh, this is the nucleus of ambiguous. This is a spinal trigeminal nucleus and uh, solitary nucleus. So uh, um, I first discussed about this nucleus ambiguous. Then the second one is dorsal, uh, vagal, dorsal nucleus of vagus. This one and uh, it lies below the floor of the fourth ventricle in the vagal trigone and it is a mixed nucleus. And uh, it supplies both uh, visceral motor and secretory motor functions and also visceral sensory functions. Then the third nucleus is the nucleus of tractus solitarius, this one. And it receives afferents. Uh, afferent gustatory fibers from valicula of oropharynx and epiglottis. It is a sensory nucleus. Then finally, uh, you have the uh, spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and it receives cutaneous sensations from the external ear carried through auricular branch of vagus nerve. Those are the four types of nuclei which gives uh, origin to this vagus nerve. Then we will look at what are the functional components of uh, this functional components related to this vagus nerve. This is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. This is the nucleus of tractus solitarius, dorsal nucleus of vagus and nucleus of ambiguous here. Then uh, the when we look at into functional components, the branchial efferent or uh, special visceral efferent fibers these are the special visceral efferent fibers and they arising from this uh, nucleus ambiguous and supplies the palatal muscles except tensor palati muscle and uh, pharyngeus muscles except stylopharyngeus muscle and laryngeal, laryngeal muscles. Then the next type is general visceral efferent fibers. They arise in dorsal nucleus of vagus and for supply of the myocardium and smooth muscles as well as glands of the digestive tract as well as, and also the uh, glands in the respiratory tract. Then you have general visceral afferent fibers. These are the general visceral afferent fibers and those fibers bring visceral sensations via the processes of inferior ganglion uh, to the nucleus of tractus solitarius as well as to the dorsal nucleus. Then visceral, visceral afferent fibers, special visceral afferent fibers and these fibers um, from the taste buds in the valicula and the epiglottis reach the nucleus of tractus solitarius from the inferior ganglion. Finally, there are general somatic afferent fibers. Uh, they, those fibers coming from those general somatic afferent fibers coming from external ear 
reach the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Those are the fu functional components related to this vagus, vagus nerve. So there are five functional components. Uh, somatic visceral efferent fibers, then general visceral efferent fibers, then the general visceral afferent fibers, special visceral afferent fibers, and general somatic afferent fibers. Then the vagus now emerge from the medulla by 10 to uh, 12 rootlets as like this uh, in series with cranial part of uh, accessory and glossopharyngeal nerve in the posterior lateral sulcus between olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle. This is the uh, olive, this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle and this is these two are the pyramids in the medulla oblongata. So you can see uh, the vagus nerve emerging from the posterior lateral aspect in between olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Uh, this is the vagus nerve. You can see the cranial part of the accessory nerve also goes uh, with this uh, vagus nerve. Then when it goes further downwards, the rootlets unite to form a flat nerve trunk which passes below the flocculus of the cerebellum. This is the flocculus part of the cerebellum along with the cranial accessory nerve towards the jugular foramen and these two cranial nerves are inside the common dural and arachnoid sheath. Exit when we talk about the exit from the cranium the vagus nerve passes through the central part of the jugular foramen with glossopharyngeal nerve and uh, accessory nerve and uh, then the inferior petrosal sinus is anterior and beginning of the internal jugular vein is posterior to the nerves inside the foramen. This is the this is this lies posterior in the jugular foramen. There are two uh, sensory ganglia which is related to this vagus nerve. Uh, the superior ganglion is located in the jugular foramen, and the inferior ganglion is located uh, just below the jugular foramen. Let's see what are the branches uh, of this vagus nerve. Uh, branches in the uh, region of jugular foramen. Uh, first branch is uh, auricular branch or alderman's nerve. It arises from the superior ganglion and also known as alderman's nerve and it gives a few ticks to the cranial surface of the auricle. Then there are meningeal branches arising from superior ganglion and uh, they enter into the posterior cranial fossa. These are the meningeal branches and then they supply uh, sensory fibers C1, C2 and sympathetic fibers to the dura matter of the posterior cranial fossa. Then uh, you learn about two branches. First, uh, the auricular branch and the meningeal branch which arising from the superior ganglion in the jugular foramen. Then uh, further uh, cause of this uh, vagus nerve can be divided into three parts as cervical cause, thoracic cause and abdominal cause. When we talk about the cervical cause of the vagus nerve, these are the two uh, vagus nerves, left vagus and right vagus. Uh, the two vagus nerves descends vertically in the carotid sheath and it lies between internal carotid artery and uh, internal jugular vein but on uh, on a slightly posterior plane up to the level of superior margin of the uh, thyroid cartilage. Below this level it lies between common carotid artery and internal jugular vein. At the root of the neck it comes out of the carotid sheath. Then, then there are about five branches in the cervical part. Those branches are a uh, pharyngeal branch, then uh, superior laryngeal nerve, then small twigs which supplies to the carotid sinus and carotid body, then uh, superior and inferior cervical carotid cardiac branches enter into the thorax, then finally recurrent laryngeal nerve. The pharyngeal branch you can see here, it is the first to arise just below the inferior ganglion and it carries cranial accessory fibers in it. And it take part in uh, pharyngeal plexus 
through which it supplies pharyngeal muscles except stylopharyngeus muscle and palatine muscles except tensor palati muscle. Remember those uh, points because those uh, those can be appear in MCQs. Uh, vagus nerve supplies all pharyngeal muscles except stylopharyngeus muscle and uh, palatine muscles except tensor palati muscles. Then superior laryngeal nerve here. Uh, this arises just below the pharyngeal branch and soon divide into internal uh, laryngeal nerve and external laryngeal nerve. External laryngeal nerve supplies uh, cricothyroid and inferior constrictor muscles. Internal laryngeal nerve is the sensory to mucosa of the larynx above the vocal cords. Then there are small twigs here to the carotid body and carotid sinus. Then superior and inferior cervical cardiac branches enter into thorax and uh, those take part in superficial cardiac plexus and deep cardiac plexuses. Then the uh, recurrent laryngeal nerves. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve originate from the right vagus anterior to the first part of the subclavian artery and it winds around the artery to occupy the groove between trachea and esophagus on the right side. And uh, its uh, relation to inferior thyroid artery is surgically important. And uh, the recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies all intrinsic laryngeal muscles except cricothyroid muscle. Then uh, it sends motor twigs to the inferior constrictor muscle as well as cardiac filaments to the deep cardiac plexus. It, it is sensory to laryngeal mucosa below the vocal cords. Then the uh, course in the thoracic region, vagus nerve enter the thorax by passing through the thoracic inlet and the right vagus nerve causes in front of the first part of the subclavian artery and um, behind the internal jugular vein. Left vagus nerve enters into the thorax uh, between left subclavian and left common carotid arteries but behind the left brachiocephalic vein. Uh, the cause of the right vagus nerve in thorax in the superior mediastinum, right vagus nerve passes downwards uh, super posterior to the right brachiocephalic vein and uh, superior vena cava and in contact with the right surface of the trachea uh, to enter into the posterior mediastinum. The nerve passes behind the right principal bronchus and reaches posterior aspect of the hilum of the right lung and then it forms pulmonary plexus. Then uh, branches of the right vagus nerve in the thorax, myocardium is supplied through deep cardiac plexus, lung, trachea, bronchial tree are supplied through pulmonary plexuses and esophagus through the esophageal plexus so it supplies aortic bodies on the arch of aorta. Then the cause of the left vagus nerve in the thorax in the superior mediastinum left vagus nerve passes between left subclavian artery and left command carotid artery. Here it is crossed anteriorly from lateral to medial side by the left phrenic nerve and uh, it is in relation, the relation to the left surface of the arch of the aorta at the posterior aspect of the hilum, the left lung and the vagus nerve divided into branches from the, which forms a uh, left posterior pulmonary plexus along the sympathetic fibers from upper thoracic ganglia and then uh, esophageal plexuses. The, when we talk about the branches of the left vagus nerve in the thorax, it gives uh, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve in the uh, thoracic region because it originate from the it originate from the left vagus nerve where it crosses the left and anterior surface of the arch of the aorta. But here in the right side, it goes be uh, it goes around the uh, subclavian artery but here it goes around the arch of the aorta here here is the left recurrent laryngeal nerve and uh, then it is uh, 
it ascends in relation to right and posterior surface of the arch of the outer to lie in a groove between trachea and esophagus on the left side. And it is liable for damage in the thorax if compressed by aneurysm of aorta or enlarged left atrium or bronchogenic carcinoma. Its distribution in the neck is similar to that of uh, right recurrent laryngeal nerve. As here, it, it goes between uh, trachea and esophagus. Uh, this vagus nerve has an abdominal cause as well. The anterior trunk contains mostly the fibers coming from the left vagus nerve and posterior trunk contains fibers coming from the right vagus nerve. And uh, here, uh, like this, it supplies uh, the liver, gallbladder, spleen, stomach, pancreas, large and small intestines, uh, and also it forms various abdominal plexuses. Now, uh, let's discuss what happens if there is a, a lesion in the vagus nerve. Uh, first, um, when there is unilateral paralysis, when there is unilateral paralysis, the effects, that means uh, the there are several effects of unilateral complete uh, vagal nerve paralysis. If there is unilateral, there can be unilateral paralysis of soft palate muscles except ten tensor palate muscle because vagus nerve doesn't supply to this uh, tensor palate muscle. So, unilateral paralysis of soft, soft palate muscles result in lowering of the palate on affected side and on phonation of phonation the palate fails to elevate. Here you can see arch of the uh, left soft palate droops because of this uh, paralysis of the left side. Um, unilateral, there can be unilateral paralysis of pharyngeal muscles which leads to deviation of posterior pharyngeal wall on phonation to the normal side. The paralyzed, paralyzed side moves like a sliding curtain towards the normal side. Then the next one is there can be ipsilateral loss of gag, rip, gag reflex. Uh, that means normally touching one side of the pharyngeal wall with a swap stick evokes the contraction of pharyngeal muscles and elevation of posterior one third of the tongue result in a feeling, feeling to vomit. So it can be lost. There is ipsilateral loss of sensation in the pharyngeal mucosa. And also there is paralysis of laryngeal muscles in the affected site. Here you can see uh, if there is a lesion in the left sided vagus nerve, there is deviation of the uvula to the uh, contralateral site. Again, I will summarize what happens if there is a unilateral complete uh, section of vagus nerve. First, there can be unilateral paralysis of soft palate muscles result in uh, failing this palate to elevate. And also, second one is a unilateral paralysis of pharyngeal muscles which leads to deviation of the posterior pharyngeal wall on phonation to the normal site. Then there can be um, deviation of the uvula to the contralateral side. Then uh, ipsilateral loss of gag reflex can be seen. And also there is ipsilateral loss of sensation in pharyngeal mucosa. And also there is paralysis of laryngeal muscles. Those are the effects, uh, those are the things which can be happen uh, if there is a unilateral complete section of the vagus nerve. Hope you clearly understood the uh, cause of the vagus nerve and the various branches arising from it and what happens if there is a lesion of the vagus nerve. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, put a like and a comment in the comment section and please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.